these are some of the networks which I've 3D printed over the last year or so. I like some of them because they're aesthetically pleasing. Um, for example, this. And this structure here has a nice kind of mixture of um, order and complexity. I like the way it spirals in upon itself. And I like this network here. This isn't to everybody's taste, but I really like the kind of way that this complex mesh of polyhedra form this kind of curved surface. Okay, so I like this, these things for aesthetic reasons, but to be honest, the main reasons that I like these networks is not really anything to do with their shape, it's about the way that they were made. You see, each of these networks was generated starting off from a really, really simple form, a cube network. And one takes something like that, and just by applying a couple of very, very simple rewrite rules, like replace this with this, and replace this with this, in certain situations, one can grow all of these amazing complex networks. There's another video I did about what it's actually like to investigate how these systems work, and it's enthralling. I mean, you just look at a rule, you start with your system, and you press go, and it evolves, and you really don't have any idea whether it's going to end up being something relatively boring like this, or something that might educate you about the nature of hyperbolic space, like this, or something which germinates into a kind of two-dimensional model universe. This grew bigger into this, which developed into this, and this is the network after it's run for 2,000 time steps. Now you can run this system for 20,000 time steps, 100,000 time steps, and as far as I can see, it continues to be this highly complex form. And eventually it just evolves out of reach. I'm a uh, advocate of what's called digital physics. The belief that the universe can be created and kind of the universe's rules correspond to something which can be embodied in a relatively short computer program. I think it can be embodied by a kind of network rewrite system. You see, the thing is with networks, um, it doesn't matter how you lay them out. This network here is just the same as this network here. It's just the same as this network here. You can bend things, you can stretch things. As long as it's still connected together in the same way, it's still the same network. And so basically, networks are more fundamental than geometry. You can use various tricks to figure out things like what kind of dimensional space does this network correspond to? For example, this. This rule here grows one-dimensional space. If we carry on running it, we just get a longer and longer loop. This rule that generated this network apparently corresponds to two-dimensional space, although I haven't run it for long enough to, um, well, I mean, I haven't proved that it, it doesn't eventually do something completely different because it's so complex, it's difficult to mathematically study anything about it. The rule that made this thing here corresponds to a kind of fractal network with a dimension of about 1.5 or something. The rule that generated this network here, this, this network actually corresponds to hyperbolic space. Um, this has a very interesting property that the, the number of nodes within our hops grows exponentially with R. So it kind of makes like a small world network where if you pick any pair of nodes, the distance between them 
is, um, well, let me just say surprisingly small without getting into technicalities. But yes, the really exciting things for me are these highly complex networks. All of them generated by very, very simple rules, but with these kind, like this one and this one, you don't know what's going to happen. The systems seem to generate certain structures which are kind of like heterogeneous. Certain parts of the network grow in specific and different ways. And some of the parts of the network look highly complex, while other parts grow some kind of orderly repeating structures. And all of this happens just by starting from a tiny little cube network and by applying some very simple rewrite rules. You could write the rules behind one of these systems on the back of a matchbox. So what is it then? How can such a complex network, how can such a intricate form as this, or the um, 200,000 vertex network you can get by running the system further, which I've pictured on my computer, and believe me, that's very complex. How can you get such things from starting off from a cube and running some tiny rules? I don't know, but you can. And the fact that you can do that, and that also there are many other examples like cellular automata, for example, where you can generate highly complex structures following simple rules. The very fact that this is possible has got to make you wonder. Could the universe be a consequence of simple rules? One thing that makes a lot of sense once you discover that there's all this capacity for generating form, all this sort of free creativity lying just underneath the surface of the space of computer programs, I think a question which is well worth asking is, what can you do with it? Well, obviously some of these things, they have kind of artistic applications. Maybe some of them can be used as jewelry. <laughs> Maybe an egg cup. I'm really interested in trying to find some less trivial applications, these kind of systems.